Okay, in this lesson we will uh, make sure that our scene is ready for final render. The first thing I'm going to do is to go ahead and set up the depth of field for our cameras. Now I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to just talk about one camera and setting up depth of field for one camera and you can go and uh, do the rest yourself just to make sure uh, we are uh, going to be uh, finish, uh, we're, we're going to be able to finish the uh, whole tutorial a bit easier and quicker. So I'm going to work on this uh, first uh, the camera that I have. The first thing is this camera is from frame 30 to 130. So this is uh, the first thing I'm going to do. And the next thing is to uh, go to that camera and make sure you know, under detail you have the depth of field rear and front blur. In this case I'm just going to be uh, worried about the real rear blur just to the uh, we'll see if we need the front blur also or not. I'm going to just go ahead and make sure you can see this camera in our scene. I'm going to get out of this camera just so we can uh, easily. We have this other camera. Let me, which one is this thing? There we go. That's the one. Let's go ahead and hide it. And, um, okay. Let's see. The focus distance, I'm going to go ahead and make sure it's right here. That's where I want the focus of my camera to be. I'm going to go ahead and make sure I uh, animate the focus distance, go to frame 130. And in here, the focus distance is sort of there, but I'm just going to make sure it's, um, yeah, that's cool. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. And then we're going to, if I go to the detail tab, this is the end of our rear blur this point here so I'm gonna go ahead and make sure something like here so there we go and maybe just something like 100 would be possibly enough here and then I'm gonna go to that camera and see what we have exactly I'm gonna go to my camera settings go to multipass I'm going to enable the multipass I mean we can go ahead and talk about the multipass rendering and uh, basically uh, go ahead and enable uh, render reflection and refractions and the uh, luminance and then uh, gather everything in After Effects but uh, I think we have uh, been talking about that enough and I'm just going to really simply uh, render a, a simple beauty path and a depth path and just go ahead and uh, do a very quick compositing inside After Effects. So I'm going to add depth to the it's at the end of the scene if you haven't seen this uh, I'm unfortunately I'm not gonna be able to just go right click and the last option that you have is the uh, depth uh, because I have added it so I can't uh, add it again. So this is the depth that we have here. And then uh, also go to your output just so we have the alpha also enable go to the save and make sure you have the alpha channel and the straight alpha so we get the alpha channel in our render also. So I'm just going to uncheck save for the moment and uh, quickly render this and see what we're gonna get. Okay, let me go ahead and delete this other stuff that we have. Just a quick render. If I go to the layer tab, you can see, uh, let's go ahead, enable the single. We have this sort of depth map here. This is our alpha. This is the main image. And uh, you can see what sort of depth map we have. I want to sort of have a more extreme depth map. So I'm going to make sure to uh, change this to zero and kind of make this thing a bit closer to here. Okay and uh, get back to that camera and render it again. There we go, now we can see we have a much more extreme uh, depth map. Let's see, you can see the uh, very dark pixels are the parts that are gonna be in focus 
and the parts that are uh, you know more of a gray are going to be less in focus even though in after effects we have the control to decide where uh, and which uh, part of the scene to be unfocused but i like to have this sort of extreme depth maps and we can control them inside after effects if we want now this is the process of setting up your depth map and that's the uh, thing that you're gonna have to do it for all of your camera uh, about the morph camera uh, what you're gonna to do is to set up the uh, this is the uh, morph setup here you can go ahead and set up the depth map for your first camera for your second camera and make sure in your morph camera itself you go ahead under detail tab and uh, check the DOF map uh, front blur and rear blur so this way the morph camera would be able to combine the parameters from your first camera and your second camera and that's all you need to do and uh, the rest is uh, uh, like the other cameras so this is uh, the process for setting up your depth of field and I'm not gonna go ahead and talk about uh, that anymore and the next thing uh, that I am going to do is to go ahead and uh, talk about the final uh, renders the uh, size I'm going to render it uh, half HD or 720p HDTV 16 by 9 we go ahead now uh, we have a, a multi camera setup so if I go ahead and take a look at this we have this first camera so for example when the time uh, we you want this uh, render this uh, camera from frame 30 to 130 make sure your timeline is uh, exactly the same thing even though it really doesn't matter because you can go ahead and define here that for example we want to render frame uh, 30 to 130 and then go to your save tab it really depends on what you want to save and which format you like I think PNG or Photoshop PSD is the ones that I really go because they are uh, kind of uh, smaller especially PNG and they contain a lot of information and uh, they are very good uh, for render let's go uh, Photoshop PSD you can uh, define your um, uh, bits per channel here uh, I suggest you go at least 16 bits per channel so we have a bit more um, space to work in After Effects in our compositing process make sure the alpha and straight alpha are enabled because we really need our alpha channel to be able to composite some background in After Effects uh, behind our uh, fluid simulation we got the uh, basically the uh, everything here set up and the next thing we uh, need to do is to uh, go ahead and enable save the, to have the multi-pass image enabled you have to define where you want to save it and give it a name and that's up to you it's really simple just uh, define a folder and give it a name and then you need to go ahead and change the uh, define a, a pass for your multi-pass image or you can just simply copy uh, the name here and paste it here uh, and add a, if you want an MP before your multi-pass it will actually add the MP uh, prefix uh, automatically and you don't need to do that and uh, go ahead and uh, uncheck the multi-layer file so your depth map wouldn't be in one Photoshop file for example for frame one if this one is enabled for uh, frame one we we're gonna have one Photoshop file uh, the first layer is the depth the second layer is the um, uh, main background or if you have more multi-pass we can have uh, each for example the reflection pass would be in one layer D and this way for all other frames if you want actually you can go ahead and add the uh, all of your uh, images for example uh, what I uh, suggest you to do uh, in this case we're just going to uh, render depth but let me just go ahead and actually uh, save this thing so we have a place to work with what I suggest you do if you are, you know, you want to go ahead and talk about multipass rendering, you go to the add uh, all image layers, okay? When you do that, you can see you have all of your important layers here. What you can do is go ahead and uh, render one frame, okay? Let me just go ahead and make sure actually we're not going to save it again. I'm just going to make sure my render is on current frame. I'm going to uh, render it and uh, what you can do after you do that you go ahead and see uh, which uh, path actually contains information and uh, you can get hold and uh, keep those paths and get rid of the other paths that uh, have no information so for example if I go to singular the atmosphere has no effect uh, the atmosphere multiply also looks like has no effect we got the uh, refraction which is one of the most important paths and we have the reflection 
which basically this tool uh, kind of makes uh, everything here. We got the ambient occlusion, which we don't have any sort of ambient occlusion in this case. We don't have any sort of global illumination, caustics, or ambience, or shadow. You can see the shadows here. We can actually uh, keep the shadow. Here you got the specular, that is another important pass. Here we have the diffuse and the alpha and the depth. Okay, so let's. Um, this is what we are having. Let's just go ahead and see the render is finished. Now, uh, as I said, I'm just going to render out the depth map and uh, uh, I'm not gonna render other stuff. Maybe in the next uh, uh, section, we can go and really quickly uh, talk about setting up as really quick, just one frame multipass rendering. For example, we go ahead and render out some of this data so we can use it for multipass rendering and how to set up a quick multipass rendering inside After Effects, which is uh, kind of really easy, but uh, in case. So we have the depth, we have the alpha, we got the diffuse here, which is uh, an important part also. We got the specular, we got a shadow, uh, and uh, then what you can do Let's see, I can go ahead to my multipass and uh, delete the ones that are really uh, have no use. For example, let's see, just make sure we have enough space here I Can go ahead and there we go. Now the ambient, for example, let's go up. The atmosphere here has, let's go ahead and delete, atmosphere multiply, caustics, post effects, global illumination, ambient occlusion, refraction, refraction shadow, diffuse the ambient. I guess we have, uh, let's see if I can see the ambient. I guess the ambient is, mm, there we go. We have no ambient, so I'm gonna go ahead and basically delete this thing. And using this, guys, we can actually have a very nice multipass rendering. And uh, maybe uh, we can go ahead and uh, start some, uh, uh, start the render if it's good. And now you can go ahead and having these passes have a, a very multifunctional multipass rendering inside After Effects. But I'm going to be showing you just one frame, just two, if you want to uh, go ahead, because really this is the approach that you have to take the multipass rendering in every and each project. But in this case, we're just going to be uh, the focus of this project, just the Cinema 4D and the 3D pa part of the project and not the compositing, but I'm going to show you how to actually use these passes to have some uh, fully multipass rendering. So you can actually go ahead and save your file here if you want the compositing project. Well, let's go ahead and save. And you can go ahead and save a project file here. Uh, just make sure you enable the save. If you enable this when you actually hit render, it will uh, automatically save the After Effects file. Because we have some cameras and we need those cameras to be actually exported cameras and lights, and we need them to be exported, so make sure you uh, uh, tick this option here include 3d data and you can go ahead and save project file and it will actually save the file for you so that is it now uh, you can go ahead and now safely uh, click on uh, render and start your render now I am not gonna be actually uh, sitting down and few days just to uh, see the renders finished I'm gonna go ahead and use them uh, old render that I have from my old project and I just show you the uh, very quick compositing process inside After Effects using that those files but you can go ahead and render these files and have your own compositing in the next section we will be starting the compositing process inside After Effects which will be very quick but in one uh, lesson I'm gonna be walking you through the process of compositing your uh, you know uh, fully multi-pass approach how to go ahead and actually talk about those uh, files uh, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead just save uh, one frame okay so we can have a, 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 a full render inside After Effects. So let me just go ahead in this case so we can be prepared. So in a current frame, uh, we have all the multi-passes that we want. I can uh, just quickly go ahead and define a place to save and I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so we have the files. I go ahead and just define the folder, named it, and here we have the file for our multi-pass. I'm gonna go to Photoshop PSD, make sure the alpha is enabled, and we can go and if we want to save project file, but in this case I'm not gonna because it's just it's one frame, so I'm gonna disable this. And uh, I'm going to uh, render this uh, one frame, and when the render is uh, finished, uh, we're in our next section, starting, uh, basically we are done with Cinema 4D. We open up After Effects and start, uh, first of all, uh, this compositing the 
uh, this one frame multipass rendering and then uh, that could be simply done inside Photoshop also but I'm just going to use After Effects uh, and after that we're going to take one of our shots and uh, the depth map and also uh, go through the process of rendering uh, and compositing actually inside After Effects so see you there okay so before finishing this tutorial I'm gonna just go ahead uh, and add an object buffer to this particle mesh so we have a easier time inside After Effects. I'm going to right click uh, Cinema 4D tag and add a compositing. Go to your object buffer and enable object buffer 1. Go to your render setting, right click on your multipass and click object buffer and make sure the group ID is 1 and that will help us to have a easier time uh, rendering inside uh, After Effects. So uh, I will get back to you inside After Effects.